Let's talk Tobago. Our people, our places, our challenges and achievements, our needs and aspirations. Join us as we continue our journey into the future. Hello and thank you for joining us for Let's Talk Tobago, the program that keeps you informed about the plans and initiatives of the Tobago House of Assembly and the impact that these have on you. I'm Colleen Holder. In our program this week, the House of Assembly looks at the financial workings of special purpose companies. The Chief Secretary says don't get your hopes up on the Scarborough Hospital's Christmas delivery. Tobago entrepreneurs given assistance to get their businesses off the ground. Women joining the ranks to protect Tobago's forests and elderly folks still teaching the younger ones a thing or two. We'll have these stories and much more after the break. Leslie Kowani. You know, she has something going. I'm trying hard, but she had to get through, but... In my days, boy, I would have stick in your tail until I get what I want. What damn stupid place you telling the innocent boy this blessed Wednesday, Joshua Walker? Innocent? Ma. That is not true. I hope so, yes, boy. Because with the set of HIV going wrong, you can't afford to be going wrong with no set of girl like some of them want you to do. Well, let me tell you, you'll be here for a short time, jollificate yourself as long as you can make it. Jollificate yourself? That is all you could tell the boy? Calvin, let me tell you this. It have people, man and woman, they look strong and nice and healthy. You can't judge people by how they look. The only way you could know if they have something is through a blood test. I just want you to be careful. I'm going to be careful, man. Come join us for a series of Tobago Conversations at the Division of Infrastructure Lecture Room as the Tobago House of Assembly celebrates its 30th anniversary. On Thursday, November 3rd, let's discuss the economy where we look at developing an investment program by exploiting available technological and resource-based opportunities with economist Dr. Vanus James. On Thursday, November 10th, anthropologist Roald Titus leads a discussion on the role of the Heritage Festival, changing Tobagonian identity. And join Dr. Rita Pemberton for History and Development, Environment, Economy and Culture in Tobago since the European Encounter on Thursday, November 17th. Tobago Conversations, in celebration of the 30th anniversary of the Tobago House of Assembly, celebrating the journey. and call me. Mom, she Big she trouble. She sick? She daughter, Natataki. Nataki. Why they don't give their children name that people could pronounce? Mom, she? I can't tell you, Joshua. The damn out so big, the whole village gonna know my family private business. She AIDS now? It's not AIDS, it's HIV. When you get that already? And she there with that boy from Lowlands? We're going to need to live? Well, all them boys in the village know you had the thing. Everybody know Cousin Effie private business. You know, there are some tablets and things you now that does make them live long once they take it. They have to learn to protect themselves. Hmm. This thing that they call hormones does make them young people do it. You don't seem to understand when we are talking about these hormones, you know, because you never did young. The motion tabled for debate at the THA's 38th sitting asked that the accounts of special purpose companies created by the Executive Council be submitted quarterly for scrutiny. Sophie Guillaume attended the sitting and she has this report. Minority Leader Ashwood Jack was again a no-show at the recent plenary sitting, where the motion for the THA to provide quarterly reports from special purpose companies was brought by his colleague, Councillor Yvette parks Caruth. This motion seeks to put the Assembly on guard. 
This motion seeks to safeguard the assembly that questions are being raised, red flags are up, and all we want to safeguard is the good name. I repeat, the good name of the assembly. Responding to the motion, Finance Secretary Dr. Ansem London emphasized that such actions are not done in Trinidad, so why is it being called for in Tobago? In which quarter of this year the TSTT, a government, a PP government owned institution, when the TSTT provide a quarterly report to the House of Representatives? Never, not done. And where is TNTEC and National Gas? And WASA, not even the Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago, is required to provide quarterly reports to the House. Tourism Secretary Oswald Williams noted that the law had already made provisions for which the minority was seeking. The Public Accounts Committee shall have the duty of examining, considering, and reporting, and listen carefully, if you may, A, the accounts showing the appropriation of sums granted by the assembly to meet the public expenditure of Tobago. So if they're not in A, listen to B. Such other accounts as may be referred to the committee by the assembly or under any law. Does that not take care of any account that this assembly can imagine? Sophie Guillaume, Department of Information. The finance minister has given the assurance that the new Scarborough Hospital will be opened to the public by Christmas, but THA Chief Secretary Orville London says that's just not possible. At the recent Executive Council press briefing, Mr. London says the Ministry of Finance must clarify what is meant by handover and what exactly they will be handing over. My information is that some of the equipment which we were supposed to, or we are supposed to have at the hospital, that the delivery of, that, of, of those equipment might not be uh, completed until maybe the end of the first quarter in 2012. And if we we'll give room for testing and other, uh, other issues, it is impossible for the, 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 the ministry to carry out its end of the contract and to provide a hospital to the people of Tobago by the Christmas of 2011. Mr. London added that the THA will not put itself in a position to take responsibility for something which should be handled by the central government. One of the reasons why there has been this, uh, you know, big fuss about the cost of the hospital and the, comp and the cost overrun is that the terms of reference were changed when the contract was, 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 was uh, tender the second time around. Instead of it just being for the construction of a hospital, it was in fact both construction and outfitting of the hospital, and that is how it became a turnkey operation. And we in the Tobago House of Assembly are going to insist that the terms and conditions are upheld by the central government. Soap manufacturing, sewing machine repairs, interior design, and garment construction. When it comes to assisting businesses, the Business Development Unit knows no boundaries. 40 Tobago entrepreneurs were recently presented with close to $1 million in financial assistance as part of the fourth cycle of the Enterprise Assistance Grant Distribution. I was in, on my way of um, doing over my shop and I saw a need where I needed more dryers and extra stuff to facilitate the crowd that I would normally have, which is maybe 20 plus a day. So I came to them and surprisingly I got what I needed and I was really excited and you know I look forward to adding to you know enhancing what I already have. The Enterprise Assistant Grant and Fund program which began in May of this year has already provided over two million dollars worth of assistance. In addressing the recent check recipients, Finance Secretary Dr. Ansem London noted that in order to protect Tobago's economy, local businesses needed to be supported and patronized. If I live in Mason Hall and I have some carting to see about, I go check Roger first because Roger is one of us. Roger is trying to improve himself and so are we. So whatever support I could give him, a gift to him, and that is something our community must learn. 
The Business Development Unit provides grants of up to $25,000 and loans up to $250,000. I own the business called Springtime Food Products and it's limitless because I can like it's agro-processing, so I can do many different um, product line, and the equipment that was sent to me is for new products. These grants recipients expressed their gratitude for the assistance. It was very helpful to me because it saved me from getting a loan, the equipment that were given to me. It was very costly, and I'm very happy about that. In a good way, you know, they helped me a lot. So I really, really appreciate the help from them, you know, and I'm looking forward again to come back and get a loan because I want a bigger shop, you know, with more, you know, um, fun stuff for kids as well, you know, because sometimes they come there and they have their kids and the kids have nothing to do. So I want to add something for them as well, you know, so maybe and next time I'll be back. The entrepreneurs were also reminded by Dr. London that all great businesses started small. Even though you're small today, just remember, you see one of the towers in Port of Spain? Yes, the one that had the boat shape, the Nicholas Tower. Nicholas and them used to sell paper bag eh? and still do. Sophie Guillaume, Department of Information. The Ministry of Housing and the Environment recently hosted a symposium celebrating women in forestry and the end to gender inequality in that field. Stefan Williams brings us the story. In acknowledging the United Nations Declaration of 2011 being the Year of Forest, the Ministry of Housing and the Environment Forestry Division recently hosted a symposium for women in forestry in the Caribbean. Minister of Housing and the Environment, Honorable Dr. Ruda Munilal, explained the purpose of the symposium. This symposium will deepen awareness at all levels, strengthening the sustainable management, conservation, and development of all types of forests with particular reference to the, to the role of women. Bringing home the point of the UN stance against gender inequality was Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations representative, Barton Clark. The United Nations recognizes that the entire structure of, structure of society and all relations between men and women have to be re-evaluated. They noted that it was only through a fundamental restructuring of society and its institutions could women be fully empowered to take their rightful place as equal partners with men in all aspects of life. In his remarks, Secretary for the Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and the Environment, Gary Melville, noted the significant roles women played within the TG, not only in the forestry division, but in other significant positions. There can be no greater evidence of that than when you look at the persons who head the different divisions of the assembly. The assembly has nine divisions, each of them headed by an administrator. And presently, seven of the nine, those nine posts are held by women. And it, it, serves, it serves as a motivation for other women in society, for young women in society, for students and so on, to believe that in Tobago, we do not have a glass ceiling, or if we do have one, it is fast disappearing. The ceremony concluded with the unveiling of the symposium's logo. For the Department of Information, I am Stefan Williams. Greater Student Support Services for the Mason Hall Government Secondary School through the British Council's Global School Partnership Program. In a recent visit with Acting Secretary for Education, Huey Cadet, British Council representatives, UK teachers and Tobago principals discussed the project and Umadara Mills has the details. Vice Principal of the Mason Hall Government Secondary School, Marcelin Jack, recently visited their UK partner, the Cherry Willingham Community School. Mrs. Jack said that she was impressed with the high level of student support services at the UK school and wanted to deliver a similar program for the Mason Hall Government Secondary School. Maybe Mason Hall Secondary can be the pilot school in Tobago for programs such as this. I have a guidance officer on staff who is already very willing to partner and learn as much as she can from the specialist at Cherry Willingham School in this area. Global sustainability through home gardening was another element of the partnership. 
principal of the St. Mark's Church of England Primary School, Cathy Hills, has partnered with the Bonacord Government Primary School. We've come as our initial project um, around um, global sustainability. It's around um, kitchen gardens was our first project that we started to think about. But we're looking at all the curriculum links that link to global sustainability. So starting from the growing, starting from where food comes from, the impact of climate on what we can grow. According to Kent Jardin, manager of the Global School Partnerships in Trinidad and Tobago, 35 schools from Tobago are involved in the program. Mr. Jardin explained that the program is designed to give students and the teachers a greater understanding of global issues. That the students in both schools will work on projects that are focused on development issues, such as sustainable development, the environment, <coughs> diversity, peace and conflict. Acting Secretary for Education, Huey Cadet, said that the program will allow students to gain a knowledge of countries they may not have had the opportunity to learn about. For our own young people here, um, growing up on an island that the population could fit in Old Trafford <laughs> Stadium, um, it, it, it is a significant opportunity where you can interact with your peers, um, half the world away who have different perceptions on certain things, but who you realize share a lot in common as persons as both of you growing up in, in primary school. I am Omadara Mills for the Department of Information. We pause for a short break and when we come back, new real estate agents given the do's and don'ts of selling property. Tiny! Tiny! Where the hell you come from now? Water more than flower this morning. Cousin if you send and call me. Mom, she Big she trouble. She sick? She daughter, Natakaki. Nataki. Why they don't give their children name that people could pronounce? Mom, to she? I can't tell you, Joshua. The dam out so big, the whole village gonna know my family private business. She has AIDS now? It's not AIDS, it's HIV. When you get that already? And she's there with that boy from Lowlands. We're going to Trinidad to live. When all them boys in the village know you had thing. Everybody know Cousin Effie private business. You know, there are some tablets and things now that does make them live long once you take it. They have to learn to protect themselves. Hmm. This thing that they call hormones does make them young people do it. You don't seem to understand when we are talking about these hormones, you know. Because you never did young. Come join us for a series of Tobago Conversations at the Division of Infrastructure Lecture Room as the Tobago House of Assembly celebrates its 30th anniversary. On Thursday, November 3rd, Let's discuss the economy, where we look at developing an investment program by exploiting available technological and resource-based opportunities with economist Dr. Vanus James. On Thursday, November 10th, anthropologist Roald Titus leads a discussion on the role of the Heritage Festival, changing Tobagonian identity. And join Dr. Rita Pemberton for history and development, environment, economy and culture in Tobago since the European encounter on Thursday, November 17th. Tobago Conversations, in celebration of the 30th anniversary of the Tobago House of Assembly, celebrating the journey. Who that? Leslie Kowani. You know, she has something going. I tried hard, but she had to get through, but... In my days, I would have stick in your tail until I get what I want. What damn stupidness you telling the innocent boy this blessed way is this Joshua Walker? Innocent? Ma, that is not true. I hope so, yes, boy. Because with the set of HIV going wrong, you can't afford to be going wrong with no set of girl like some of them want you to do. Well, let me tell you, eh? you'll be here for a short time. Jollificate yourself as long as you can make it. Jollificate yourself? That is all you could tell the boy? Calvin, let me tell you this. It have people, man and woman, 
They look strong and nice and healthy. You can't judge people by how they look. The only way you could know if they have something is through a blood test. I just want you to be careful. I'm going to be careful, man. Welcome back. The real estate industry can be a lucrative field, but agents who don't act ethically may find themselves sued by persons who think they've been cheated when selling property. The first ever Tobago graduates of Roytech's Principles of Real Estate Sales Program were reminded of this key ethical issue by Afra Raymond, the chairman of the Joint Consultative Council for the Construction Industry. Here's more from Omadara Mills. 17 students recently graduated from Roytech's Principles of Real Estate Program held at Ravenel's Resort. Feature speaker Afra Raymond, chairman of the Joint Consultative Council for Construction Industry, JCC, reminded the graduates that their obligation is solely to the client. He also told them that it is important to be ethical and take their responsibilities seriously. The obligation was to the client. Let's be very clear. There is no obligation beyond informing the person about the particulars of the property. There is no obligation to the purchasers. Let's be clear. There is absolutely no such thing in an ethical world as helping a purchaser. People don't believe that a real estate agent could get sued. They believe that as long as there's no money missing, like you didn't steal a deposit or anything like that, there's nothing they could sue you for. But in fact, you could get sued. If you want to behave ethically and to grow your business, it's important to write down what your obligations are. Valedictorian Natalie Mahabir endorsed the notion that real estate agents should maintain ethical standards so that there can be public confidence in the profession. And you should stick to what you know is right and don't let get led astray by the thought of easy money or a quick promotion of yourself or, you know, there, I mean, there are so many ways to be, dis to be dishonest in real estate. I mean, you couldn't even count them. So I just want to say, please, you know, let's try and change that face of real estate agents. Chief Administrator Dr. Ellis Boris told the graduates that their completion of the program makes them certified pioneers in Tobago's real estate sector. Let me thank you for maintaining discipline and completing the program. You have played a big role in pioneering a new initiative in Tobago. I am Umadara Mills for the Department of Information. A retired educator is honored for 22 years of service at Devines Road Government Primary School. Stefan Williams tells us that Principal Jocelyn Sampson left an indelible mark on all her charges. You gave us through your love and care the greatest gift that we could receive. You taught us how to care and share, but most of all, how to believe. Each child was like your very own, with different traits and varied styles. But your direction had set the tone for our future across the miles. At times, we could not always see the lessons you shared from the heart. Yet, as we reach our destiny, we understand you played a part. That was a poem written by former students of Mrs. Jocelyn Sampson, retired principal of the Devines Road Government it's Primary School. Mrs. Sampson retired as the principal of the school after 22 years of service. On a day which featured song and dance, all honoring Mrs. Sampson, Chief Secretary of London provided the feature address. You know, what you find sometimes happening is that it takes a very special individual to be totally professional, but totally involved emotionally with her children and her staff. And I think, I think she was able to achieve that very, very delicate balance. And I think that is what made her the very special person that she is. While reminiscing about her teaching days, Mrs. Sampson recounted stories to the audience that stuck with her throughout her 22 years as an educator at the Devines Road Primary School. One boy will come and he will stand like this, with his hand behind his back. Now, normally when I park, I will take about two minutes to communicate with my God before I get out of my car. So he, he knows that, so he stands there with his hand behind his back until I signal to him I do this, then he will open the door. For the Department of Information, 
I am Stefan Williams. They may be past their prime, but the senior folk of Tobago showed that they can teach the younger ones a thing or two when it comes to playing traditional musical instruments and cards. At the Department of Health and Social Services Nostalgic Roots Competition, 10 contestants vied for the $2,000 first prize, and it was eventually won by a contestant who played a very unusual instrument. Take a look. There was pan, dance, and four harmonica players. But neither of them was any match for Hubert Duke, who copped the first prize by playing the conch shell. Accompanied by fellow contestant Hugh Ramsey, Hubert proved that the conch shell can hold its own on any rhythm. Ironically, Hugh, who accompanied Hubert, plays second with his pan playing skills. while harmonica player Hinkson Marcel gave a medley of Kaiser classics. The competition started back in May where 50 contestants in five districts, De La Ford, Cane and Bonaccord, Pembroke, Lansfamy and Blackrock were whittled down to the final 10. The Nostalgic Roots competition also featured an over 60 all force competition where five trophies were up for grabs. Sophie Guillaume, Department of Information. And that is our program for this week. I'm Colleen Holder, and on behalf of the entire crew, thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago. Yeah, we build our nation together.